In this video, I'm going to explain different creative market licenses and how you can use fonts and graphics in your business without getting in trouble. So let's dive in. Hi, I'm Lainey. I'm a wedding invitation designer. I love to teach people how to design invitations and run successful businesses. A big part of this is using fonts and elements from places like Creative Market. And someone asked me to go over the different licenses and explain kind of what they mean. So I'm going to help you determine how you cannot get in trouble and use things within the law. You can always reach out to them if you have questions. Um, but what I find is the fonts kind of fall under one category and the elements kind of fall under a different category. So you'll see desktop, EPUB, app, or enterprise broadcast and more. And then for elements, you'll see personal, commercial, extended commercial, enterprise broadcast and more. And you'll have to kind of contact them for that. This is my font that I created. So I can speak to this as a creator, as well as someone who purchases a lot of elements and uses them um, for my invitation designs. So if you just click on this little button here, you're going to come to this licensed um, FAQ page for fonts, and then there's a different one for the general licenses as well. So the desktop license is basically for unlimited commercial and personal products. Any end products, packaging, social media, paid ads, etc. The only thing that you can't really do with a font on creative license with the desktop cheapest license is embed the font files. So, okay, embedding the font files. The main thing this means is that you can't give this to someone else to use the font to create a final product. So you can't put it in a template on Cordial, for instance, you can't um, put it on a Canva template. You can't upload it to Canva. Canva has very specific fonts or template or cordial. All of these companies have very specific fonts that you can use when someone else is doing the work. So it might not be, it might not seem like someone else is really doing the work if they're just typing in their name in the font, but that's how I like to think about it is like, if I'm the one typing in the font, I can do it. If someone else is typing in the font, they can't do it. If you have someone on your team, you can share your license with them typically. However, if you wanna do templates, et cetera, you need to use fonts that are template certified or grab potentially the EPUB or the app option. The web font is not gonna be an option on everyone's. Like I don't sell it on here, although I do tell people if they purchase and they need the web font just to email me for that. And it's the same price as the desktop, I will send them the web font. This basically means if you're putting it on your website. So again, if you're the one typing it in, <laughs> you're fine. If you're not, then it's not fine. So you can't use it for games, print on demand applications. That's gonna be like, I type in my name and get it printed on a shirt in the font. Um, so all of this is what you can use the web font. These licenses are generally gonna be the same cost or very similar. The app license is for one application and you can do this in like games or anything that's embedded. So this is again, not for anything where they can pretty much type it or extract the font out of it. So you're not gonna be able to use this for print on demand applications. That's something where you're gonna to need to contact the designer of the font, say, hey, can I use this in Cordial? Can I use this in template? Um, they do have, like for Cordial, for instance, they have like an add-on library that you can purchase of a bunch of different fonts. But in general, you're going to need the font to use the fonts that are widely available for print on demand design applications. And the EPUB, this one's usually cheaper than app. I don't know why this is like this, but here, so EPUB is only like $10 more. This is going to be like for an ebook or something. Um, so it's kind of confusing because you are typing the thing. So it kind of doesn't make sense, but it is something where you might need to embed the font in the publication. Oftentimes we're not going to use this. Most of the time, what we need to use is the desktop or the web font license. Um, your web font is just going to be like on your website. If you want to use a font, you typically just need a different version of the font and it typically will be about the same cost as the desktop. We oftentimes don't even use the app license. Uh, a lot of people think that if you purchase the app license, you can use it in those print on demand, portal, etc. But you actually can't usually do that with the app license. So make sure you reach out to them. A lot of people charge like 10x, 20x for <laughs> something like that. I know that's kind of where my brain would be if someone wanted to use Sapphire Script on Cordial, etc. because that's something that I own and I actually use it um, in my own templates. And so I love to do that. <laughs> so I love to have the rights to be the only person who could do that. But it's always worth reaching out. Some people might say yes, 
Some people might say no, some people might say yes, you can do it for 40 bucks or something and that might be worth it. Now for watercolor elements, any other kind of graphic elements, you're gonna see personal, commercial, extended commercial, and then again, enterprise broadcast more. Typically we're gonna fall under this commercial. It is suggested for me. Um, personal just means you are not selling it at all. You are not making money off of it. One thing that I wanna clear up here is for marketing purposes. So if you were going to use these pages and put them in something for social media template, that's still considered commercial, even though you're not specifically selling that item. Another thing you need to keep in mind is that you need to change the thing somewhat significantly. You can't just put um, one of these peach elements. Give me one. Okay, I couldn't just put this one element on an eight by 10 and print it as that or sell it. You also never have the rights to resell it. You have to kind of make something with it, change the use of it, um, change the ability. I sell some of these things like I'll make a frame and sell it as an envelope liner because that's different than just like relying specifically on just this element and selling it as just a print or just an element. So here we go. The personal one cannot appear in any commercial projects. You can use it for an end product, not for sale. And then one personal social media account with non-commercial activities. So that's the difference between uh, posting it on the social media, like, for fun just because you want to be cute versus something you're actually trying to make money off of. The commercial license can usually appear in up to 5,000 in products for sale. So as an invitation designer, this can be a little bit confusing because is an end product one invitation suite or is it three pieces? If there's three pieces that all have the same element on them, is that three pieces? Is that one piece? I tend to think of it as that's one piece. So if I do 100 suites, even if I use the same peach on the invitation and the RSVP card, I typically put that as one piece because the, the suite is sold as one piece. I'm not saying this is how every single person would, <laughs> would agree with it, but that's kind of how I interpret this, and I think it's a pretty safe way to interpret this. Um, so it can be up to 5,000 suites, in my opinion. Um, again, this is not a legal opinion, and it might be something we could ask the creative market to fully defined for us, but I think there's, it's very rare that we're actually selling 5,000 of something as invitation designers. You can use these on your social media account. You can use it on advertisements and digital paid advertisements. So usually digitally, you can use it like unlimited, but you can't share it to a separate business social media account without purchasing a separate license. And then broadcast and streaming, so this would be something like a webinar or a YouTube video or something like that. You can't do this um, if it's more than 500,000 lifetime views, but that commercial license will cover up to 500,000. And then if you get past that 5,000 in products, like if you are printing, 10,000 flyers for an event or something, you might want to purchase the extended commercial license. You can also reach out to someone if you're somewhere between 5,000 and 250,000, like you need 10,000. Um, maybe this is a pretty big jump from the $28 to the 840 and you only need 10,000 and maybe they'll say you could purchase, you know, two commercial license or double the commercial license for like 55, 60 bucks um, to get 10,000. So you can always reach out if you need something that's kind of in the middle. Uh, but this extended commercial is just basically all the commercial stuff but more <laughs> and you can use it on one native app web game or download it up to 250,000 times now in general there's a couple of things you want to note which is don't resell or sub license the asset you can't just sell this and say it's your own thing that you created you can't resell it says any modification of the asset on its own so again you can't just sell this peach printed by itself. Um, you can't make the asset like public or give it to anyone. And of course you can't do anything bad with it um, or pretend that you were the one who did it. You, If you purchase a commercial license, you don't have to credit the creator. If you purchase any of these licenses, you don't have to credit them on creative market. You might on other websites have to, uh, but you can't pretend that you're the one who drew that or whatever. Sometimes clients just assume that I painted things and I think that is perfectly fine. No one's ever going to question you on that, but as long as you're not saying, yes, I painted this, yes, this was hand painted, et cetera, and you're kind of clearing that up with your clients, um, that's really helpful both for the licensing restrictions and for your clients. That's really helpful both for not breaking the law with the license and also just doing right by your client. And then just some clarifications here. You can use it as like label or packaging. You can use it in your logo. Again, as long as it's not just like the pH and nothing else. Um, and then you can use it in like a pattern or creative fabric, uh, but you 
need to keep in mind that the pattern must be differently different. So a lot of these elements will come with patterns too. Let's see if this one does. Um, so you couldn't just take one of the patterns that was included in the pack and then sell that as fabric. You would have to like use the elements to create a new pattern that you designed and sell that as fabric. So this explains the difference. I feel like with the fonts, it's mostly about, am I the one who's going to be typing it and then printing the end product um, with these elements. It's about making sure it's like significantly different and the entire value of the work isn't derived like just from this one peach, but you do something a little bit unique with it, whether it's creating kind of a different style end product or a different style design with it or something like that. And then I would always just say if you need something in the middle or you're not clear, just always reach out. You can, of course, reach out here with licensing help or you can reach out to the designer specifically. So like this is Angelique Kemp. You can usually ask questions about the products on the bottom. Um, you can make comments on it and then you can typically send the shop owner a message directly through Creative Market unless you can find them on a different platform. In general, people are really happy to have you license their work. The problem is just you are going to have to pay for it if you're using it outside of these terms. So if someone were to contact me and say they wanted to use Sapphire Script like on an app or a game or something, I would be very happy to license that to them, but it would cost them a certain amount of money. So uh, don't try to like undercut these people, but it is okay if you're not exactly sure about the terms to always reach out to them and say, hey, I'm between 5,000 and 250,000. What should I do here? And sometimes they might just say, okay, 10,000 is fine under the commercial license. As long as you have that in writing, it is okay. I right, hope this was helpful. Let me know what you thought. Give me a like and subscribe and watch some of our other stationary design videos while you're here. Thanks everyone.